Rolling up on Wendover at midnight. Midnight Sunday night, rolling up on Wendover. And we had a long journey. It took two days. Two days to get here. Well, after a whirlwind of parts, tools, and hard work lean up in Bonneville, the Lark Streamliner was 98% ready. Fresh carbon fiber body, new high voltage battery, and a redesigned landing gear were all completed under three weeks. The trek out to Wendover was only supposed to be 10 hours following on the 80, but that was not in the cards. After traveling about two hours over horrible California roads, we stopped to check the bike in the trailer. To our dismay, the bike was laying on its side, and a new ventilation hole appeared in the floor of the trailer where the landing gear was supporting the bike. Turns out the tie downs were rubbing against a freshly cut bracket, and when it failed, the full weight of the bike punched a one foot square hole in the floor. We scrambled to right the bike and resecure it in a more favorable position. With what seemed to be the worst behind us, we wiped our brows and continued on. The run to Tahoe was 8,000 feet elevation, and the van quickly started to overheat under the load. We stopped the fuel and noticed a sizable red puddle under the transmission. We chatted it up with some rock crawling passerbys, and it came to the conclusion it would be okay if we let it cool down and drove a bit more conservative. After about an hour and 20 miles from Reno, we shared stories about flat tires while towing and noticed a pulsing hissing noise coming off the shoulder barriers. No biggie, I thought. I had a plug kit in the van. It shouldn't take too long. Or at least I thought. Uh, you know, it ended up I didn't have a plug kit in the van, so we had one delivered out and it took about four hours. Three plug kits later and a bottle of slime, it wasn't going to fix it. We ended up getting to downtown Reno around 2.30 in the morning and I was browsing Facebook Marketplace for diesel trucks till the morning. After a long day waiting and a Walmart parking lot haircut, we are back on the road, but not without a leaky diff seal and a new top speed at 45 miles an hour. What's that? Hey, where are we at? Where do I know? Nevada. Alco. Alco. Two hours from Salt Lake City, towing the trailer after a hell of a day yesterday. We're almost to Bonneville. Hey! Doing things. After our two day trip, we finally made it to Wendover. My longtime friend John Brasswell joined the crew and we set out to the salt in the morning. Bonneville! Made in Bonneville. Let's go see how much dip food came out. Mmm! Already got a nice little puddle there. Ew! I did it. The first thing we did, we went through motorcycle tech inspection. I knew we weren't going to pass, but the out of the other bike prompted a short tutorial on how to qualify electric streamliners in general. Heading into the pits at Bonneville. This is my first time. I don't know where the fuck I'm going, but it's gonna be sick. So we just got done with inspection. They checked out the bike. Uh, I, I know I had a couple things I had to do anyway, so I'm gonna take the bike over to the pits and start doing some work, and hopefully we can get um, all the supplies we need. We're gonna probably have to go back into town and get some metal and maybe a couple more tools, but we should be done fixing the bike up and be ready to do the bailout and final inspection either tonight or tomorrow morning. So it's getting exciting. With only a couple hours before the hardware store closed, we set up camp and went to go get some food. On the way out of the restaurant, Jordan spotted a nice bit of stainless countertop near the dumpster. And after further inspection, it turned out to be perfect for what we needed. Okay, so I went to tech and they said that, I, I know I forgot two panels for the side and we were going to the store to get some metal and we found some metal at the Mexican food place. So I'm just gonna swoop it. Uh, I forgot these and I had to cut some new ones. So this is actually to keep uh, any of my limbs from flying out in the case of a, a vent. Um, they basically make you put all these panels on so that you're just protected and you don't need to worry about, you know, the leg coming out or anything else. Um, that's kind of their, their goal in this whole inspection is to make sure that if there are any issues and you go down, you're going to be safe. So it's best to just work with them and listen to them and do whatever they want because they've been through all this stuff and they see the problems. So this will keep me safe. And uh, thank you, Mexican food place, for throwing out your whole 
stainless countertop. The next day we had all the tools out, cutting, welding, wiring up all the last bits needed to pass tech. YouTuber Superfast Matt actually joined in and helped tidy up the wiring. He crimped some wires and snipped some zip ties. Near the end of the day we summoned the tech inspectors to the pits and scraped together a passing grade. We were ecstatic. The dream to run on the salt had finally given the thumbs up and tomorrow was the maiden voyage with a large streamliner. Oh yeah, Dustin! The next morning we arrived early and prepped the bike for our first pass. All systems seemed good. With the light just cresting over the eastern mountains, we snuck in a photo shoot. Man, this thing was great. Now we actually had to wait for an official to give us a rundown on procedures and safety. And near the middle of the day, we hooked up the tow strap and pulled the bike three and a half miles to the start line. About 17 is back from the start, there was actually a course closure due to a crash, so we had to burn some time by walking around and meeting the other teams. The rookie course I would normally run on was closed a couple days before, and the officials lined me up on the long course, the big boy line. We were bumping elbows with the greats, Valerie Thompson, Team Besco, Nebula Serum, I couldn't believe it. A couple hours later, the lane opened back up and the line started to move. Some of the other teams found out I was electric and a rookie, and got really excited to see me run. As we rolled up to the line, I was strapped in and ready to go. The start line attendant asked me to start my engine, and I replied, it's on. She looked super confused. Uh, the canopy was secured, and I was ready to run, so she said for me to go. I started to press the throttle to give a little bump, and nothing happened. After hours in the blazing sun and some salt side repairs, I was worried something was wrong, so I tried to cycle the bike, cycle the motor, nothing worked. The start line official kept signaling, and my heart sank, thinking like, oh man, we're going to have to push this thing back to the pits. She waved down my crew and see if there's a problem. I tried to yell through the canopy while I was power cycling, but I don't think they could hear me. I did a total power shutdown. I flipped the main contactor, turned on 12 volts, and pre-charged. It was my last chance. With one press of the throttle, the bike lurched forward, and I, was, I knew it was go time. I eased on the throttle to get the bike up to a comfortable speed around 50 miles per hour. I cruised for about a thousand feet waiting for the landing gear to retract all the way up and I had an idea how long that should take and I was well past it. The landing gear must be up I thought. As I gave it more throttle it instantly shot up to 90 miles per hour through the first quarter mile. I focused on balancing and kept the bike to the left side. As I approached 100 miles per hour I started to feel the bike vibrate like a big shaking through my body. I had to change the front tire last second to get a better ride height and I didn't have time to balance it. The vibration grew as I went faster and faster, and I was strapped in so tight my body was feeling every shake and bump. My GPS speedometer started to get blurry and grow in size. For my rookie run, I was capped at 150 miles per hour. As a rookie, they basically follow you down the track, make sure everything's good, make sure you know how to drive. At mile 3, I pulled the parachute to scrub some speed, and they pulled right out. I was feeling super stoked. My first run was almost over. I slowed to about 30 miles per hour and started lowering the gear. Meanwhile, I watched the left side of the course to look for a turnout. I knew the position indicators for the landing gear were malfunctioning, but I figured I would just slow way down and wait for the supporting wheels to come all the way down. As I came to an almost stop, my left side gear started to touch. And when I went to turn out of the track to the left, the bike actually tipped to the right, and it should have been a landing gear, but I ended up just rolling over like an egg on a countertop. I skidded to a stop about 10 feet. It was uneventful in terms of Bonneville tip-overs, but slightly embarrassing. Track officials rolled up within seconds, and I was getting out of the now horizontal bike. After a limping toe to the pits to ungroom salt, I sat with a massive grin on my face. That's not exactly how I imagined it, but the experience was to never forget. I decided that I was just going to pack up and leave because a record run wasn't in the cards. I had to get everything fixed, so the return home was slow, uneventful, and minutes after I got home, one of the trailer titles finally released all of its air. I guess the road gods spared me on the roadside frustration, but couldn't help but leave me with one last goodie.